All right, so we're going to do a little demo about linear regression. We're going to use the stock market to see the uh, risks uh, of a stock. Um, and we're going to find the beta number for that stock. And we're going to follow here the instructions. And we're going to see pretty much if a dependent variable is influenced by a independent variable and we're going to as we do the demo we are going to look at all the steps all right so what i want to do first is look for a stock that i wanted to calculate so here i open a regular excel make sure that you have the data here in the end you have the data analysis tools okay so if you don't have just go to files options and in the add-ins, you just go here. You have to add the analysis tool pack and analysis tool pack B, VBA. Okay? All right. So here I have it. So far, so good. So I'm going to look for two stocks that are interested. Uh, usually you have more than, uh, you know, two stocks to analyze, but this is what I, I, I have in mind. So I was looking for very inexpensive phones and I looked up that processors and I found who does the manufacturing for the uh, mi microchip, the processor for the phone. Uh, for example, memory current dimensions, the processor is a Snapdragon and the Snapdragon is part of the Quantum, Quantum Incorporated, Seacom, right? And then the other phone that I look is Alcatel, uh, the 7 model. This phone goes for $40 and uses a uh, um, quad, uh, quad core 1.3 and the actually the MTech is MediaTek is the company, the Taiwanese company who does this processor. MT6039, 6739, I think. Anyway, so I'm looking for these two companies. So, Seacom and uh, MediaTek, these two uh, uh, semiconductor companies. And this is based in Taiwan. And I want to calculate that uh, beta number. All right, so how I do that, I'm going to go to the historical data. So here my portfolio, historical data right here. So I went to the historical data. So I'm here at the media tag. I, I really, I have my portfolio here. Oh, I didn't sign in. Uh, okay, here. So in my portfolio here, I uh, have uh sectors what is my portfolio here i do semiconductors in the u.s i like to kind of look at robotics and semiconductors all right so i go i want to calculate this so i going to look uh five uh years the last five years what has happened to this stock there you go now i don't want to look at daily prices i want to in this five years to look at every month. You can do daily, but that's a lot of data. All right, so now that I have here selected, some of you might have a little tab that says apply. Mine does it, so I'm just going to go and download this data set. Make sure that you copy this uh, name here because when I'm downloaded, I, I want to make sure that, ah, no, ah. I know that's that. I'm going to put it in a folder in a minute. And then the next one is this one. I am going to um, go to the uh, historical data. I want to make sure that I look for the last five years. And I actually want to look for monthly prices. So every month, 
how much uh, this stock change the prices for every month and I'm going to download so you should do this always with multiple not only two but think about it you're gonna have a portfolio of four or five uh, so since we were supposed to go to Yahoo Finance now you can find how can you find if the stock is risky or not I'm gonna go here we're gonna copy this and put in my analysis uh, Okay, so I have this too. I'm going to close this up for a minute and then I'm going to go to my here. My I'm going to save this is uh, to the same folder. Uh, you can call it portfolio analysis. It's a good one. All right, so here. In this uh, first one, I am going to merge this, merge, merge. I'm going to call this Media Tech, is that the name of it? Yes, Media Tech. And here I'm going to leave uh, the thing, that, that one space here. Eh, I'm going to do this one. This, I'm going to call this this is going to be my so it's one two three four five one two three four five and here I'm going to put I need some kind of uh, um, S P 500 index and then it's going to be my index because I need something that's going to say, okay, this is, we, we you have to have some kind of uh, metrics that uh, you can compare your stock to the metrics to see if your stock is up, down, risky, not risky. So you have to have some kind of index. So we're going to get that too. So before we move forward, let's go download the index. Here we're going to type SP. 500 index uh, is X. Yes, is SP. Did I say XP? SP, yeah. SP 500 index. Here it is. I'm going to go to my historical data. Same thing. This is my index. This is going to serve as the measurement. We are going to pair it our numbers against this and then make sure they all have uh, the same monthly they're going to have the same dates and you're going to download so five years historical prices monthly and we're downloading here our index okay i'm going to just change the little there. All right. So I have my three, my three, two stocks and my index. We need to get some more data there, but let's go start first with this. So if you go to the handout here, the first step, get three stocks. Uh, let's go put two, make life two stocks and the index market and the index market is the SP 500 index. Okay, is the benchmark. All right, so you're good. So here for the index, we're going to first put the data for the index. I'm gonna open this CSV. You can open with Excel. The data that we need here is the date. The volume, we don't need none of the data. We need the dates 
and the opening. So we are going to copy date and all the way here. And we do have a little problem in the back, in, in the ending there, and we need to fix it. Okay, perfect. So this is said that this was null. So I'm going to actually put the same number as before. Yep, all right. So there you go. And then here, I'm going to filter by newest to oldest because I need the data to be that recent all the way to the end. All right, perfect. So we got that. Let me do a little save. Now we're going to go to the see the quantum. I'm going to go and open this one. Right, this is the correct one. I'm going to select this all the way to and here I'm going to paste that and remember the data are not and then here in the bottom since today is April 1st I'm just going to put the same as that before obviously uh you had to not do it in the first month but i just going to put the same like nothing has changed i'm going to select this two actually this and this and i'm going to sort from the newest to the oldest so the dates should match here now they're not going to save <clears throat> the last thing that you need is the index I'm going to close this. I'm going to open my SPX. I'm going to do the same thing. There's the SPX. I just need the date and the opening. And I'm going to sort it from, well, I cannot sort it yet because this is incorrect. Copy. All right. So now I'm going to select this and I'm going to sort it from the newest to the oldest, save, perfect. So now what would else we need to do? So I'm gonna close this up, don't need it. Uh, all right, so I have it here, and then after I have selected, you select download historical data, this is how you're going to look. Before you can do an analysis, first you need to calculate uh, the um, long return. So what is a long return? Is the return on investment over a long period of time. So we need to calculate long return. And I'm going to type here, long return. So the long return is calculated with, between these two values. And then we're going to do here, LN, and then this. And is that divided by this? And all right, so we're going to go here and put all of this all the way to the end. Save. And here for the numbers one, two, three, four. Oh, that's too many. Maybe we can, there you go, three numbers, good, save. 
I'm going to do the same with this. So we do in here, we do equal, put the former from long return, parenthesis, the older divided by the newest, close it, press enter, and then you are going to And then here we're going to. Oh, you know what? We did something wrong because this was the same amount. Okay, never mind. Here we're going to change to. Oh, sorry. Two sixty one. I, I did. Uh, you should uh, calculate this correctly. All right. I'm going to delete that. Equals L N. And then older divided by newest. No, it's not working. Okay, I think this is my problem. A second. Okay, so here it is. Long return. This will be equal LN. This div uh, by the by this. And in here, I'm going to make sure that I leave. How many left on the other side? Three? OK, three. Save. And the last one we're going to calculate is the calculation of the index. Okay, never mind. I'm going to change the number here to Okay. Better. Okay, so here And we're going to three, yes, save. All right, so now here I'm going to put uh, my calculations because I need to find uh, the mean and that's the average. The average is the mean, correct? So I need to find 
the average for uh, the average for the monthly return for MediaTek. Uh, quantum and S P five hundred. <coughs> Sorry. All right. To find the average, we need to find the average in the long returns. So you go and do equal, and here's the average. And then number one, all the number two, and that's your average. We're going to do the same thing for the second one. And then we're going to do the average, the main, the middle, you know, of the average of the stock for the um, index. <clears throat> Very good. Now that you find the mean, the average, you need to find the risk. And what is the risk? The risk is the standard deviation, is how much away from the average does your stock flow? So the standard deviation is the risk. So how you find a standard deviation? Again, same thing, you can look at here. You use the standard deviation <coughs> and the long return, okay? So let's go and do the is standard we're going to use the standard the, the standard deviation as here and then we are going to do the same thing okay do a little saving as you go and i kind of wanna okay three numbers for me is fine here i'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to get the second one here. I'm using the long return values, <clears throat> the month in long returns. And here I'm actually making three. So this is how much it varies from the middle. Okay, so that's the risk. Actually, this is really risky. That's the middle, and this is uh, 0 0.1. It's really different, that too. Okay, so, <clears throat> and that's, let's go find the standard deviation for the index. All right. So the standard is, is uh, for the index is 56 and probably is going to be very close to the risk-free value. Okay. <clears throat> From the uh, U.S. bonds. Okay. So we found here the risk uh, is how how far by the, the, by the mean, the average is your stock. So that you know if it's too far away, it's too risky, it's too close, then it's uh, safer. Then we are going to do a correlation before we move forward and look at the risk-free rate. We're going to do a correlation between two stocks. For example, uh, for so um, we're going to do a portfolio or correlation. We're going to do media, tech, and see. Okay. All right. So, if I buy these two stocks, Sequom, uh, Quom, 
I always forget the name of this. Uh, these two uh, process, uh, microprocessor companies, right? If I invest in the two of them, how if one goes down, also the other one goes down because they're related in market and so forth, or they're completely different sectors. If one goes uh, uh, down and the other one is secure, so how is my portfolio? So for in order to do that, we need to find the correlation between the two of them. So we need to find correlation, corral, and then we need to do one comma, and the second one is this two stocks. So that's the formula, corral, then you do long returns comma the other long returns for the second one and I press enter so here let's see so it's actually not bad it's a negative but they're not really related too much to each other because it's 0 0.5 it's not one uh it's zero it's less than half so it's not it's it is uh, not um, is a good portfolio to have. Both of them don't have the same um, risk. All right. So having both of them is not going to be the negative zero point five five. All right. If it was one, for example, means that one goes down, the other ones goes down too. All right. If I am wrong, please correct me. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is to look at the risk-free rate. Where you find that? You'll find that uh, you have to kind of Google it. You can find this on the Treasury bills, Bloomberg uh, data, uh, and it's actually 5 0.38%. So that's the average of your uh, risk-free rate. <clears throat> Why is that? Okay, so risk free rate. Okay, so that's the percentage that is maintained by an entity that says, well, this is secure, this is where you should compare to. So that's from stocks, the uh, US bonds. Yeah, so you look here the, of uh, treasury bonds. I'm sorry, yeah. All right, and the last thing we're going to do is find the beta number, is how risky is each of these stocks, the media tag and the sequel. This one, uh, the correlation that looks that combined it together, is that a good portfolio? And now we're going to look at the beta number. And there's actually association rule, all right? So here is going, I'm going to I'll put this maybe in another uh, page. And let's see, uh, let's go look at here. We have the free risk number. Let's see. So far, so good. All right. So here I'm going to go to my data tools here, my data tab. You should have this data analysis, and we are looking for regression, right? And we're going to say, okay. Now, the Y input is the dependable data, meaning what are my stocks, right? Um, is um, dependable on this index, because the index is just a number that is as a a benchmark right for the stock uh, index 
but the uh, price for my stock here fluctuates according to the market. Something happened in the market, my stock's prices does go up or down. So my stock is the dependent data. So let's go select the dependent data here. So it's all of this. And my independent data is the long return for the index because that's the benchmark for uh, the stock prices. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, we are the confidence level here is 95. You can select 99. We're going to leave it as a 95. We're going to put the output in a new sheet, in a new worksheet. Everything good. And we're going to say, okay. And here is my sheet. Uh, ba -ba. Okay. So my variable is minus 0 0.1. So the variable was between minus one, zero, and one, right? If my number is close to minus uh, one, so this is 0 0.1, uh, 0.1, uh, this is zero. If it's 0 0.8, it's close to one. And this is actually really close to zero because it's zero minus one. So it's very close to zero, this beta number. So let's go. Are we going to check if this is correct or no? Let's go here. So this beta number for MediaTek is, uh, I forgot to copy. Uh, why? <sighs> I hate what when it does this. All right, I uh, didn't save none of those. Yay, risk. Uh, what did I uh, calculate here? I even forgot what it was. Standard deviation, oh, gee. Okay, here this was the correlation, right? Um, what it was, media tech. And see, now this is the correlation, right? Now beta number. Okay, so the beta number is here, data, analysis, regression, okay, so you need to get beta number for this, and in here is against the index. And uh, confidence, uh, da, da, da. there you go. And it's 1.0.169 minus 0 0.169. All right, that's it. That's the standard deviation, STD. And this is for this one. All right. And the standard deviation for this is STD.
sometimes this is hard. Not because this is hard, but it's because... Okay, do the saving, Monica. Uh, I did this. What else did we do? Uh, mean, standard deviation. We need the risk, the mean. Uh, we need to pull the uh, risk free rate. And we found it on 538. 30, 538. Okay, I'm just going to put 538. 5.38. Save. I'm feeling that I'm forgetting one here. Uh, a correlation between, okay, correlation between media tech and C, oh, quant, quant, what? Q, C, O, M. Okay, so here we're going to do a correlation, corral, and we're going to do, uh, which one is this two, right? This, comma, and then the long, because we are looking to see if this two stocks, my portfolio, is risky or not. And uh, is minus, uh, let's see. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. Ah, there you go. Much better. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so uh, much better. So this is the beta number for this. Uh, now let's go look the beta number for quantum. Analysis, regression, and this. Okay, so I want to know the beta number, so the risk. of this stock again. So this is the dependent variable against the independent variable that is the index. And then confidence, the worksheet, okay. And then here we have a one, uh, three, seven, two. Uh, 1.372 or 0 0.372, let's see, 1372, 1.372, oof, that's not good, 1372, okay, so let me save, so that's good, so that's the beta number, so this is means that this doesn't change with the changes of the market but this means that it does because everything that is more than one it means that it changes with the fluctuations of the stock market this is is a negative number so it does not change the fluctuation of the market so let's go and double check this if that's true or not if i did the correct numbers Okay, let's go look at this summary. Is one point, what is this? Which one MediaTek is beta number is 114. Let's see. I think we didn't do it right. 114 is one, I, for us, for was negative. And as MediaTek is minus and in here is actually, wait, that's one day, five years, 114, the beta for five years, 114. <coughs> we got min negative, and it, this is positive, so that's not good. So let's go look at the other one is
and for five years, five days, five years, is 141. Yes, this one is very close. We did change some of the data from the last one. So that that's was uh, a little, we changed the data because we didn't have the data for the last one. So what we're going to do here is, I'm going to fix this. Since I didn't have that uh, data, I am going to do it all over again because I don't like to do things that are not correct. So delete entire column. And I'm going to put it here. A return. Okay, maybe that's what I did it wrong. And I don't like to do things wrong. So let's go do what is correct. ML. And this is here. Divided by this and enter. Okay, so I'm going to grab this here. So we will do this really fast again. And I'm going to make sure that one, two, three, uh, just three numbers. Okay, and save. Okay, so here, delete all this road. Long return. All right, let's see. We did download all the data correctly. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. Two. What, what, how many are we doing? One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. And save. And then for this, oh. and then this long return, okay, equals ln, this divided by this, and all right, let's see, mm -hmm. I should not edit a, uh, um, that's wrong. You can't add numbers. You can speculate like that. So you get it wrong. Okay, so now all of them are incorrect. That's okay. Okay, so here I'm going to find the average equals average. And then here is my numbers. Okay, now I'm going to do the same here, average, and the log return for this. Let me save first. I didn't save the other one. And then this is also average. So the average is the medium. And let's go get the index here. And perfect. And that's it. All right. So for this, we're going to use the correlation. <coughs> oh, we forgot the standard deviation. Never mind. Okay. Here we're going to calculate the risk. And the risk is just the standard deviation. Okay. So the standard deviation is just equals is how much from the mean your uh, data goes. Standard deviation as here. Save. Uh, so standard deviation is 1.26. 
away from the mean. And this is for this one. All right. And this one is for the index. So let me need to kind of calculate the index. And there you go. Okay, so I didn't took too much time. You should always practice uh, again. Uh, practice makes better. And I selected three, and here is three. Uh, the risk, ra the risk-free rate is that rate that I told you that is by the as U.S. bonds. So that's the percentage of uh, the risk-free rate is 5.38. Is usually about that that uh, number. It's very close to the index. Uh, 500 index is 0, 0 0.36, this is 5.38. Okay, now we let's go do the correlation between these two. Let's see if I have a good portfolio. So we're going to do corral correlation. I'm going to grab my stock one, comma, my stock two. I want to see if my investment, if I did a good selection. If one goes down, at least the other one is going to give me profit. So let's see. Zero point zero. So that the down influence much want in another, and it's very interesting because, um, ow, because um, they're both uh semiconductors so i'm going to delete this and i'm going to do that uh, data so i'm going to delete this one delete delete and this one delete because they were wrong okay so i'm going to go to that analysis we make sure regression and i'm going to delete this delete this here in my Dependent variable, I wanted to check my beta number for MediaTek. And in the independent variable, I'm going to use the index 500. There you go. And then I'm going to say, OK. So here now I have minus 0, 170. Mm, 171. Let's see. This is minus 0 0.175. All right, so let's go look at the quantum. Uh, let's see, this is analysis, correl regression, and let's go look at this. And this, okay. So I'm looking now at my Dependent variable. Ah, por qué? Let's see if this works this way. And then my independent variable will be the index always. All right, so OK. And this is 137373. One, three, so this is 1. 373. Save. And I'm going to double check again with that five years. And this is, is 141. 141. So it's not bad. Very close. Not that bad. However, this one minus 0 minus 171 index, what is media? Uh, it has been going down. That's why it's so ne it's negative. High, low, volume. 114 for the day for five years. For five years has done really good, but it is showing negative for today. Five days. Not bad. 
but it's really down. So this is, well, this is more than, than one. So let's go see what it means anyway. Either way, uh, for example, this is more than one. So it is very volatile against the market. So if the market suffer losses or gains, this stock is to be, is moves according to the stock market. So it's not a safe uh, stock. And so is this one. This is really not safe. Uh, 0 0.1. Uh, zero it is minus zero this is not uh, also not good because it's negative in the other direction okay so that I am that I know so I knew to finance but it's not a good so let's see what else and this portfolio here it says that one doesn't really influence the other one you know, they're not really connected. They're almost half point, almost zero, right? They don't have a relation. Everything that's close to zero is because you don't have a relation. So they might not relate it to another. See, something happened to one, it might not happen to another. I have the feeling that this is MediaTek and Quantum, they're very secure companies, even though this MediaTek is really going down. Very expensive, though. Let me see how expensive it is. Let me see, price is previous closing. Uh, $1,155 per, per stock. Gee, anyway, uh, I hope you guys have fun. Let's go do this in class and then we'll move forward intrinsic value. All right.